whether we are just one uh, particular form of a, a much vaster tapestry of possibilities. These are questions that thinking men and women have wondered about for thousands of years. You know, it amazes me, you know, the people that were rationalizing the Bush program, you know, say, oh, we're going to do science on the moon. What are we going to do? Oh, we're going to learn about mass extinctions on Earth by dating craters. And we'll know about the periods in which there are bombardments. Well, that is science that is worthy of publication. I mean, you can get some papers out of that in the Journal of Geophysical Research. But the particular dates of impacts on the moon is not fundamental science. It's historical science. It's dating some craters, okay? Worthy of publication, but not worthy of a major national commitment, okay? Uh, finding out the truth about the place of life in the universe, that is important. That is central to our philosophical understanding of the nature of reality, okay? So there's no comparison. And finally, Mars is where the future is. The planet that has the resources to support life is the planet that has the resources to support civilization. And it's the place where we're going to find out if humanity can become a multi-planet civilization. So that's what it's about. Now, are we ready? Okay. Well, we're ready if we choose to be ready. You know, the analogy is this. Uh, how much rope does it take to connect two posts separated by uh, 10 meters? Well, it can be done with 10 meters of rope, or it can be done with any amount of rope, depending upon whether you want to connect two posts or whether you want to sell rope. Okay. The, 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 the. So someone says, well, you know, we need to prepare for Mars. We're not ready. There's risk if we do it now. Instead, I mean, we should do a lunar base, okay? Uh, the gateway to Mars is the moon. I call it the toll booth on the way to Mars. Um, okay, there are some people, I mean, Dr. Bush, when he gave the uh, vision speech, said that we would build space bases on the moon because we can make rocket fuel on the moon and it's easier to launch a spacecraft from the moon to go to Mars than to launch from Earth to go to Mars. That is true. It is easier to launch from the moon than from Earth to go to Mars. But before the spacecraft launches from the craft launches from to the moon, okay, which means it has to launch from Earth. Okay, and the the fact of the matter is, is if you actually look at the dynamics of the system here, it takes more rocket fuel to go to the surface of the moon from low Earth orbit than it does to go to Mars from low Earth orbit. That's because Mars is an atmosphere and you can land on Mars with the assistance of aerobrakes and parachutes, whereas on moon it's vacuum, we've got to do it all with rockets. So even if there was a lunar Cape Canaveral already built right now and they were giving away rocket fuel for free to anyone who would drop by, it still would not make sense to go to the moon to refuel on the way to Mars. Okay? The, so it's absolute nonsense. Then there's the people who are selling various technological rope. Okay, you know, here is, this was an O'Keefe favorite, the Battlestar Galactica nuclear ion drive spaceship. Um, and uh, it's quite large. You can see uh, Mars is over there for scale. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and indeed, if one waits to have this before you go to Mars, you're not going to Mars. And that is the purpose of it. Um, and then there's the idea we should practice for Mars on the moon. Oh, you could practice for Mars on the moon, certainly. But you can do it in the Arctic for one one-thousandth the cost, as we have been doing. Um, and, uh, and you can do it now, as opposed to starting 20 years from now. Uh, so this is not a thing. And one could go on. There, there are, in fact, an infinite number of precursor missions or testing activities or what have you, that could be proposed to say we're going to do this to minimize the risk before we go to Mars. But if you actually want to go to Mars, you cannot take that approach. You have to take the approach that we want to go to Mars, we're going to do the mission, and you have to do it in a constrained time frame. I mean, the thing that made Apollo work, the reason why the Apollo program was a success was the schedule the schedule, the deadline that Kennedy put on the program. Do it by the end of the decade. 
You know, there's a, a great story I, I once heard uh, related at one of these conferences by the historian Howard McCurdy. Uh, and he recounts a meeting that had occurred uh, at Marshall Space Flight Center around uh, 1963, I believe. And at this time, they still had not settled on the lunar orbit rendezvous as the way to accomplish the moon mission, although it had been proposed and it had some factional support. Johnny Humble had proposed it, lunar orbit rendezvous, this is how we could do it with a Saturn V, single launch, et cetera, okay. But there were people with other agendas. There were people that wanted to build a space station before we went to the moon. We've got to have a space station so we can do on-orbit assembly. It's impossible to do a lunar mission without that. So we've got to have the giant wheel spinning in orbit and everything, uh, just like in the Von Braun movie. Um, then there were the people who wanted to build the Saturn IX super boosters. So, well, if we did this, then we could do direct launch, direct return, no need for uh, orbital rendezvous. All we need is a, a Saturn IX. Um, with nine F-1 engines, um, take off with 13 million pounds of thrust. Fantastic. Um, the, the, or then there were the nuclear rocket people, and I'm a big fan of nuclear propulsion, but what these people were saying is you can't go to the moon until you have nuclear propulsion. You can't do your program until you do our program, which is basically what the other guys were also saying. Okay. And then there were the lunar orbit rendezvous people, so well, we could just do it this way. And they're all arguing about it, and they're all putting down uh, orbital rendezvous, oh, how do you know you're gonna do it? There's risk, there's this, there's that, what if you miss the rendezvous, yada, yada, yada. Okay, and then finally somebody said, look, do we really wanna go to the moon or don't we? And then there was dead silence in the room for 30 seconds, and they all looked around and they said, it's lunar orbit rendezvous, rendezvous. And that's what settled it. If you don't put that deadline on the program, it doesn't happen because there are any number of people out there who want to insert their programs into the queue. And in fact, Sean O'Keefe knew this, which is why he, as soon as the vision for space exploration came down, he proposed, he set up 30 committees. I was on two of them, okay, and each of these had, had, had 30 people in them, so almost 900 people were invoked to come up with precursor activities before we could go to the moon or Mars, draw roadmaps. Griffin, thankfully, shut the thing down. I sent him a road map. It was a copy of the New York subway map um, because that's what this committee would have come up with. Um, committee of 900. Uh, the, 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 uh, now, there's another thing, another reason why it's got to be constrained, which is this, which is the reality is, is that the tactical situation of a humans to Mars program if you want to compare it to a, a situation in, in the history of human conflict, the best analogy I can give is the tactical situation facing the children of Israel as they attempted to cross the Red Sea in the book of Exodus. That is, here's the situation you've got. The Egyptians are behind you. They're coming to kill you. God, uh, Moses has just parted the waters. So now there's these two cliffs of water standing right here and a path of moist land that you can trod in between them to get across. But you can't do this on a 30-year timeline. <laughs> okay, because God's patience is not infinite and the U.S. Congress is significantly worse. Um, and, um, you know, if you attempt to do this on a 30-year timeline, DeMille's special effects budget is going to run out and <laughs> the waters are going to come together and you will drown and you will never make it to the promised land, okay? And, I mean, look, if John F. Kennedy had said in 1961, I think we should go to the moon, perhaps we could get there by the year 2000, well, then what would have happened? The space program proceeding at that leisurely pace, okay, we get to 1968. We're in the middle of the Vietnam War. Then Nixon is elected. You know, people marching in the streets. And you've got a new administration coming there. And the space program moving at the slow paces, maybe in the middle of the Mercury one-man capsule flights at this point. And people say, why are we doing this? This doesn't make any sense. Why are we doing this? And they would have canceled the program. And noted space historians, you know, like John Logston or these people today, would be going around talking about this episode. And they would say, yeah, you know, do you realize that back in 1961 there were people who, who were talking about going to the moon? Well, we all know this never really could have happened. Okay? It never could have happened. But, you know, this was a crazy idea that some people had for a little while. 
Um, no, the reason why it happened was the deadline. So you cannot get to.